Aqueducts are not that complicated in theory. That is that water uh, seeks its lowest level uh, and therefore that you can run water down a slope uh, from any area uh, to another area. Uh, so that that's a pretty simple premise uh, that everybody would have known. Uh, but that the practice of um, creating an aqueduct is another thing. The Romans engineered their aqueducts to approach the city on a gradual declining angle, or gradient. That gradient was just several inches every 100 feet. The slope of the aqueduct had to be calculated from great distances, uh, 20, 30, sometimes even 40 miles, uh, from the source in the mountains to the cities themselves. That had to be consistent. They couldn't deviate from it, regardless of what the terrain was. To maintain the water's precise descent through high mountains, Roman engineers dug perfectly angled tunnels through them. When the pipelines reached low valleys, they were elevated on stone walls. If the walls needed to be higher than six and a half feet off the ground, the Romans saved building materials while still adding strength by perfecting an ancient engineering concept, the arch. The arch revolutionized architecture in the ancient world by permitting far greater spans than had been allowable before. They basically changed the spatial conception uh, totally of Roman architecture. Arches were built around a temporary wooden framework that held each stone in place until the keystone was laid in the center. The keystone evenly distributed weight down each side of the arch, allowing builders to stack additional stones above it. Arches are improvement upon building just a straight wall uh, in a variety of means, both in terms of their efficiency and in terms of their strength. The arch, of course, takes much less material to build. Arches are very strong at supporting things like roofs and aqueducts and whatever you want to put on top of them. A six-mile column of arches carried the Aqua Claudia across the valleys on its way to Rome. The aqueducts would have had a covered roof, but of course if you could take the roof off, you could see the water like an open river coming down towards the city. After reaching the city, each aqueduct emptied into three holding tanks. One for the public drinking fountains, a second for the public baths, and a third reserved for the emperor and other wealthy Romans who paid for their own running water concept that was well ahead of its time. Basically every home by the first or second century AD of any means had running water. This is astounding because the entire span of the Middle Ages they didn't have